Hi guys, welcome back to Vlogmas. Today's video is gonna be a will it waffle. Essentially, we're just gonna be cooking a bunch of different stuff on the waffle iron. Most of the things Laura and I have made before. Funny story, we actually bought our first waffle iron while we were dating because we'd heard about somebody doing Krispy Kreme donuts on a waffle iron. And while we're not doing that today, they're definitely delicious. But that's what we're gonna be doing, so let's hop into it. Alright, so here we have the Willet Waffle grocery haul. I'm calling it Willet Waffle after another YouTuber, Jackson Bird. He does these sort of things all the time. I will link his playlist down below in the description. And it's sort of a misnomer for what we're doing because we have tried all but one of these in the waffle iron and like them. No, I was wrong. All but two of them. So we're going to do waffled grilled cheese over the next couple days. We know this one works. That's what the tomato soup is for. We love that. We're gonna try waffled quesadillas. We might add some other ingredients that we already have on hand. We're gonna do waffled cinnamon rolls. Again, we know that this one works. We're gonna use the biscuit dough, the pasta sauce, and the shredded cheese to do waffled pizza bombs. We know those work. The new things we're gonna try are waffled cookies. Haven't tried that one yet. And waffled macaroni and cheese. And we might end up adding black beans, chorizo, and corn to this, so stay tuned to see exactly how we do it. But these will be the things that we will be waffling. Is there anything more nostalgic than Campbell's tomato soup? And that's how you know we're being fancy as we went with the name brand and a grilled cheese. We're going with classic little kid grilled cheese. I know white bread isn't the healthiest, but this is a straight comfort throwback meal. So I have white bread, Texas toast style with a piece of Colby Jack and a piece of pepper jack for Loud and I. And then one is already on the waffle iron. Ooh, these come out so good. We'll show you the finished product. We're going to call this disaster cam. I definitely put the cheese a little cl too close to the edge of the bread. So if you want to avoid a melty mess, leave a little buffer. Oh boy, slow-mo. Hi honey, are you excited? I am. You ready to take a bite? Yes, always. So this is what it looks like when it's done. Go ahead and get your bite ready. So good. It's crispy like grilled cheese. Go for it. Oh, you didn't go for the dunk in your soup? Um, we are two very I different need to try people. The shoes first. I'm sorry, I'm a shoes person. I'm a mm. dunk person. Every bite must be dunked. Mm. So far, very good. Good. All right, we're back at it. Um, Ani was asleep before Loud and I had lunch, so she didn't get any grilled cheese. So she's going to have a cheesy quesadilla and apple when she wakes up from her snack, which I think will be very soon because I can hear her moving around. So I'm just going to put it in just like this. Um, I kind of play around with the heat setting. Currently I'm going to do it closer to low versus maximum, and I will show you when it's all done. Well, I would say I got that quesadilla going not a moment too soon because as soon as I put it on the waffle iron... This little sleepy banshee woke up. Can you say hi? Hi? No, not yet. That's okay. Okay, well she's got her apple, her... I'm not even really going to call it quesadilla, although you can technically see that it's a l little bit grilled. She was a little impatient and wanted it then. Um, and then she has a cup of water. And as a mom hack, if you don't have a good pair of kitchen shears, a good pair of kitchen shears, you're missing out. That's what I use to slice this into pieces because that's how she likes it. You gonna take a bite? Well, I mean, this counts, right? If she's only eating the melted cheese. <laughs> oh, goodness. You love cheese, don't you? Well, anyway, you get the concept of a grilled quesadilla or a waffled quesadilla now. Um, waffled quesadilla is just however you would make a normal quesadilla. And then you put it in the waffle iron. What do you think, Ani? Is it good? Can't talk because you're eating? Okay. Toddler life is being frustrated about your quesadillas until mommy figures out that you wanted them served inside out. As soon as we folded them so the cheese was on the outside, she was a happy customer and she's been scarfing them down. Right, Ani? Are they good? I don't think you're fully awake yet. Oh, we're making up some pizza bombs. So Lada has some biscuit dough with cheese rolled up. And then we put them in the waffle iron. 
until they're a little toasty. There is some leakage, but that's okay. I actually then, like the ones that have the cheese on them. Yeah, they get a little like extra crispy on the outside. Mm -hmm. So those go in there. And then we dip those into spaghetti sauce or pizza sauce, whatever you have. They're also good if you do, these are just cheese, but if you do pepperoni or whatever kind of pizza toppings you like, they're super tasty. So here are the finished products. A little bit of sauce. Ani is choosing to enjoy hers separately, which is fine, but easy and tasty. I'm gonna be real honest. The downside to cooking in the waffle iron is the mess that is left in the waffle iron. And we get to cleaning this bad boy. That's not bad. All right, it's all cleaned now, so I'm gonna try our next project. We'll see how it goes. I have this thing preheated to about medium, and we're gonna see how this goes. If you can, uh, you know what, I'm gonna do it like this. If you can hear some noise in the background, it's Lauda and Ani watching Frozen 2. All right, so you can see I heated it to about medium. I'm assuming this is gonna take at least five minutes, but we'll see. All right, well, it's been five minutes. Let's check these bad boys. They're very dark, very soft. No, I don't think these are done yet. All right, it's been two minutes. These things smell done. Woo, they're definitely dark and crumbly. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is scrape this out, lower the heat, and try again. All right, well, I finally got the first round out. This is what they look like. They're a little darker than I would prefer, but Lauda and Ani like them, and they taste fine. They would make an amazing ice cream topper. But I've lowered the temperature, and I'm gonna try again in a minute. I have lowered it to a low heat. I am gonna leave the spray off this time, and we'll see how they go. All right. These have been cooking at a lower temperature for twice the amount of time, and let's see how they look. Okay, not quite as dark as the other ones, but just as soft. So, if anybody knows how to make cookies work in a waffle iron, uh, tell me in the comments, because they don't seem to have worked. So that's our first fail. Alright, inspiration has struck. It occurred to me when you bake chocolate chip cookies, you pull them out of the oven and let them cool for a couple of minutes. So these have been cooling. Waffle iron's not hot. Let's see if that made a difference. Oh, guys, it wasn't a complete fail. That is cookie. Let's do the taste test. That's a trick. Cook them low, slow, and let them cool. Oops. All right, waffled item number, I don't know. And today we've got waffled cinnamon rolls. These are a favorite. Uh -huh. Oh yes, delicious. Look at that. <laughs> this is all you do. We just use the pre-made cinnamon dough and you just pull them apart, plop them on. And it takes about what, five to six minutes? Yep. On what, medium heat? Medium. Mm -hmm. On medium heat. On medium heat. Yep. And then you get this goodness. We add the frosting later, right before we're about to eat them. What this breakfast lacks in fruit and vegetables, it makes up for in deliciousness. I will say, that's plenty. Our waffle iron cooking is not always the healthiest, so the trick with these is to spread them out as treats. Alright, final waffle attempt. I have some of the classic uh great value brand mac and cheese i've heated the waffle iron to medium and technically i know when they like deep fry mac and cheese they add some flour and egg as like a binder but i want to do this as just a natural mac and cheese waffle test maintain the integrity if you will so i didn't do very much just because i don't know how it's going to work but i'm going to pop it on there Try to contain it to a triangle. Oh dear. Okay. And um, we'll give it a couple minutes. All right, we are going to check on this and I think pull it out. It's definitely cooked some. I might let it cool down just a little bit. Sort of similar to how I did the chocolate chip cookies to see if it kind of 
comes together because I can tell right now it's gonna come apart so I'm gonna give that a couple minutes okay it's been a couple minutes we're gonna try this I have a feeling yeah I don't think it's gonna come out in one piece okay well it's definitely a fail for having one formed piece of mac and cheese but I think if you added some shredded cheese and or a little bit of egg it would bind together but let's see how it tastes I've got a little clump of it here Hmm. It tastes, oh, it's a little hot in the middle. It tastes less like texture wise, boxed mac and cheese made just on the stove top and a little bit more like baked mac and cheese, which is the good stuff. Um, obviously the flavor is still boxed mac and cheese, but texture wise, it tastes more like it's been baked. But anyway, that is gonna conclude our will it waffle video. <laughs> um, we had fun with this. I definitely recommend if you try these to split them up over a couple of days because they are definitely not the healthiest of meals, but they were pretty tasty, even the fails. So with that, we will see you tomorrow. Bye.